Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today what we're going to do is we're going to make an audio player like so. So how this works is we choose a file. So mp3, wave, whatever you want. Well actually I think mp3, wave, and aug are the main. Hit play. We can pause it. We can stop it. We can play it again. And we can adjust volume as well. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up example.py. And we're just going to start it by importing PySimpleGUI as usual, it's SG. And notably, what we're going to use in this tutorial is we're actually going to use the PyGame library. So PyGame is a library that's used to make games in Python. I actually have one tutorial that I made fairly recently on how to use it. But for some reason, this tends to be the most like commonly used um, library for working with audio in, um, in, Py, in PySimple GUI and just Python in general. And kind of the reason why is because there's really no good audio libraries in Python, which is a problem that I don't understand given how popular Python is. Anyways, if you want to install this, you're going to have to use uh, pip install pygame. Now moving on, let's go ahead and let's create this UI right here. We want a uh, file input um, or file browser play button, pause button, stop button, and then a slider for volume button. So we'll say layout equals, um, let's see, sg.text, choose file. And then we'll have uh, sg.input for this window right here. So sg.input, that's just going to be blank. And then sg.filebrowse, so we can click on this button and actually open up and uh, browse for a file, like so. So we'll have sg.file browse and key equals sound path. So we'll just give it a key in the standard format. So we're gonna say sound path because this is gonna give us the file, the path to the file, the sound file we're gonna work with. Then we'll say, create another um, line, sg.text, uh, size equals 12, one and key equals uh, status. And this is where we're gonna up update the status, whether it's stopped, playing, or paused. Um, we'll get to that, more of that later. So we'll say status right here. Okay, cool. And then next we wanna do is we wanna create uh, these three different buttons. So we're gonna say, um, they're all in the same line, so they're all gonna be within an array, uh, a single 1D array. So we'll say sg.button, play uh, pad equals 10 just to have some uh, distance in between them. So that's for this like this, this distance right here. Um, that's going to be zero. We're only looking for some horizontal distance there. And then key equals play. Let's go ahead and copy this three times for each of our buttons. And then we can just make some edits there. Just to save ourselves a little bit of time. So I'll we'll play We've got uh, pause, and then we've got stop. All these have padding, these need to have different keys. So we'll have pause, uh, stop, and that should be good to go. All right, and the last thing that we want on this line is we want the slider right here to be able to control volume. Um, and we're gonna say sg.slider for that one. Uh, range equals zero to 100. So that means that right here, for example, you go from zero to 100. Um, and what else do we need? We need orientation to make sure it's uh, horizontal. Uh, size equals 50, 20. So length versus height, sorry. Um, so this is gonna be the height and length. Uh, enable events just to allow us to correspond. Like enable events basically allows us to carry out an event every time this is changed which is really, really important in this case because we want our volume to be dynamically changing. Um, we'll give it a key to keep track of that of the value of that slider, which could be anywhere from zero to 100. So we'll say volume, and then default value equals 100. So it just means it's gonna start out at the maximum volume. So generally it's gonna start right here when you open up the app. So we got a comma right there and that should be good to go. So now that we've done that, we can move on to uh, creating our audio player window. 
uh, equals sg.window audio player layout finalize equals true cool all right and then what we need to do is so this mixer so we kind of we imported a um, mixer uh, library from Pygame um, or rather let's say a mixer module from the Pygame library and this is what's going to be used to control our sound so it's basically a sound mixer but in Python um, so we're going to say mixer.init just kind of get that mixer started and then we're also going to use create a boolean variable called is playing equals false um, in order to keep track of whether the um, like whether the mixer is actually playing something or not. Uh, so let's go ahead and then um, we're going to go ahead and also actually before we do that, we also want to, mm, let's do pygame.init. That's to initialize our pygame library right here. So now we're gonna start with our, with our event loop. We're gonna have um, while true uh, pretty pretty like standard event values equals audio player uh, window dot read. Um, if event equals sg dot win close, this is allowing, allowing us to close our window. Equals exit um, break. Um, so next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get the uh, sound path from this part, so from this um, right here. So we'll say sound path equals um, values sound path. And um, this is actually going to be pretty important um, for anything that we do. So we shouldn't be able to click on play, pause, stop, or volume without actually having a sound path, so a path to a sound file. Um, so what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna say if not sound path uh, sg dot pop up no song specified and then we're going to continue which will basically put us right back up here. So basically going to refresh the window and then basically the user is just gonna have to keep refreshing a window before they can um, do anything unless they put the sound path in there. So this is kind of an element of validation. And once we do that, we actually want to create a um, sound object. So we're gonna, set, we're gonna say sound or rather we're gonna say song. We're just gonna kind of assume we're just playing songs. It goes mixer.sound and then sound path. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to also keep track of the song length. Well, actually, we're not really going to use this, but it, it's still just something I want to show you guys. So you have the option to um, kind of make use of this. And then we're going to say we're gonna actually going to take this song and put it into a channel in our mixer. We're going to say mixer.channel, and we can even give that channel a number. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call it number two. We're not really going to make use of that, but... Again, it's something you could conceivably use if you're doing more complex stuff here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually create events based on our play, pause, and stop. So we're gonna create the events right here that allow us to do that. So we're gonna say if um, event equals play. Then go ahead and audio player window. Um, status so first we're going to update the status um, just telling the user that the audio um, clip is playing so that's updating uh, this one right here this status um, like element right here which is what, what's getting well this is basically what that is so we're going to say dot update um, with the text playing um, so next we're going to say is playing equals true And that's this variable right up here. And then we're going to say um, song channel dot play and then song. 
So we're basically from the uh, channel object we created, we have a play function and we're going to input the, so the sound object we created right here. So this song goes right in here into the uh, song channel dot play function. And now next we're going to handle the pause event. So we're going to say elif event equals pause uh, if not is playing. So if this is false, um, audio player, uh, window, so we'll just go ahead and copy this because why bother? All right, okay, and then we're gonna say playing. So if this isn't playing, we actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna unpause it. Um, so yeah, basically like if the track is currently like um, it's not playing and we want to restart again after it's been paused, then we're going to unpause it. So we're gonna update this to playing. We're gonna say is playing equals true. And then we will do a uh, song channel dot unpause. So actually this is a bit weird because um, what we're doing first is we're handling the case where it's been paused and then we wanna unpause it. But if it's, if like it's not playing, so if, sorry, if it is playing, so this is if it's not playing, if it's been paused and it's not playing. This right here is if it is playing, so we can say else um, audio player, we're just gonna update this to paused. And then we'll say uh, is playing equals false because right now we're actually just gonna pause this. And then we can say song channel dot pause. So again, I kind of did this in reverse. Um, I had the unpause function. So I checked, okay, the pause button has been clicked. Um, if it's not playing, then we're going to unpause it and we're going to get it to play. Uh, if it is playing, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to pause it. And both, time we're going to set, both times we're going to set these Boolean variables equal to the um, appropriate value based on whether it's playing or not. Um, now, again, it's also a bit weird that this comes before the pause and unpause function. Um, if it makes you feel better, this could also go afterwards. It doesn't really make much of a difference. This isn't really like, there's no callbacks. This isn't really like in JavaScript where everything is like, you know, kind of event oriented, um, which also kind of makes this difficult. But anyways, that's just how it works. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to handle the um, stop event. So we're going to say elif event um, equals stop. Um, again, update the status to stopped. And what this is basically gonna do is this is just gonna stop the track. And when we wanna play it again, we need to hit the play button again. So this basically just says game over. We're just gonna stop playing this. And we're going to say song channel um, dot stop. Again, the order doesn't matter. Like maybe, I think it probably makes more sense to have this code come afterwards, but it, like I said, it makes no difference. And then we're going to have um, is playing equals false. And now the last one's a bit special. So the last um, sort of case we're gonna handle is we're gonna say, is we're gonna actually gonna handle the volume. So now we're gonna say in the event that there is like someone messes with this one right here, um, we'll say, so elif um, event equals volume. Uh, then we're going to store that in a variable. We're going to say values equals, um, sorry, values volume. And then we're going to say song channel dot set uh, volume. And the thing is like the volume in the song channel object in Pygame um, operates, so that's between uh, zero and one. So basically what we need to do is we need to take this volume, which is between zero and hundred, and we need to um, divide it by hundred. So we're gonna say whatever volume we have, whatever volume we're getting from this right here, we're gonna divide that by a hundred to get a volume that corresponds within um, Pygame like for this sound channel set volume function. And then that's pretty much it. We're just gonna say audio player uh, window.close. So, so far that looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and let's test it out. 
All right. Got a problem right here. I assume that's with the commas. Perennial problem. All right. Unexpected keyword default. That's interesting. It's going to be on this line. That means you probably made a mistake somewhere here. Range, orientation. Uh, this one's got to be default value, not default. My bad. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, and that works. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just pick a track. Um, you could take this from anyone on your computer, but I just have one that's pretty low that I put in this directory. So hit play. Okay, we can pause that, unpause it, stop it, start again. And then we can also decrease volume. So that's it right there. Um, again, like this is like working with sound in Python is just very like brittle. And I tried like five different libraries to try to get this to work better, and it just really didn't. And one of the other problems is that you can't really like one thing this lacks is, for example, if I play this and it goes all the way to the end, um, there's not really a good way to detect whether it's gotten to the end or not, and then just say um, not stopped, but track has been finished or something like that. So I can play these, so I can play the track, but I can't really detect um, like events, like when the track finishes. And then I also like, I tried to make a progress bar initially, and it was just, there wasn't really a good way to keep track of how much the song has played. Um, if you look at the GitHub repository, there is another method of doing this. And that one, so what this does right here is this takes the whole audio track and it immediately puts it in memory, and then we play around with it. The other method um, actually streams it, which means that you can kind of keep track of you know where the um, like where the audio is, like whether you're on minute one, like one point, like one minute and two seconds, or like whatever. Um, but with that one, unpausing didn't work for some reason, and there were a bunch of other errors. So this is actually just like the simplest way um, among a myriad of bad options to work with audio. And this doesn't even involve an audio library; it involves an audio library affiliated with the. Uh, Pi game library, which is really just used for making games. So anyways, that's how to make an audio player using Pi Simple GUI. Um, if this tutorial has been useful to you, please make sure to like and subscribe. Um, have a nice day.